Okay, good evening, year six, parents and carers, welcome to today's session. I'm not going to tell you what today is. I guess you all know it already, but we're going to leave that to have a quick run on our um, welcome chats for today. So just to remind all of you, quick housekeeping, um, on the screen you can see today's Slido code. Could you log into slido.com and enter hash 1805, one five five or you can just scan the qr code now you know that when you go to writing in your name could you write in just your first name and your first name only and the second part of your name is going to be your primary school okay and as soon as you've done those two things so you've written where you're supposed to actually say who you are don't keep you anonymous because we want to refer to you by name and refer to you by your primary school as well so name first name only, and then your primary school. Once you've done that, I want you to say, obviously say hello to myself and sir, and followed by what is today's session about, okay? So I'll give you maybe a minute to get yourself sorted and situated. Welcome, I'm gonna scan the QR code myself so I can then see all your beautiful messages coming through. And I know sir has done exact same thing as well. So let me get my camera open. Oh, I can see some hellos coming through. We've got Jazz, hello, um, and Jazz is from Lessiness, so welcome. We've got Isla from Belmont, welcome. We've got an anonymous, that's it, geography, we need to know who you are. And Michael from um, Timbercroft, welcome. Lots of names I've seen in, you know, in all our previous clubs, so welcome, welcome, welcome. Give everybody else another minute to get it. I'm in, so are you in? I am, yes, yeah. Perfect everyone's great responses it's really nice to see so many different primary schools as well it's really really lovely i think we've got one answer already telling us what today's session is going to be um however uh we wanted to come from somebody that actually did put in their name as well so don't worry you can all have a go at this oh jazz is very excited can't wait jazz we can't wait to see you as well Oh, you've got a sibling here at BA, even more interesting for you. We're not going to ask you the name of your sibling. This is not going to be fair. Unless you really wanted to tell us, then we don't mind. Okay, I think we're mainly situated now. Well done to all of you that said is geography. Joining us today is our faculty director for geography, Mr. Juzit, and he's going to be taking you th through today's session. But obviously, you know, we have to do some housekeeping first. OK, just to remind all of you, if you're joining today for the first time, what you need to do is go into our school's website. I'm going to just share a page with you now so you can see what that looks like. So go into the BA's website. And if you just scroll up from the top, or you can just go to Academy Live if you don't know how to get to this bit. So it's year six transition. And here's the welcome message. If you haven't listened to it yet, feel free to go and actually listen to it where you've got Mr. Muse and um, Miss uh, Freeman literally welcoming you, introducing who they are to you as well. And then we've got our transition clubs. The very first one obviously started way back in April. So we are literally the second month in and scroll all the way down so these are all things that you've missed that if you just join us today so feel free if you click on the link that says click here it will take you through or you can just click on the icon it will take you through to the video of that session that took place on the 10th of may um with english and scroll all the way down to yes perfect it's exactly where we want to be so our virtual geography club now you can see the worksheets have been um, linked onto the website as well. So click on your choice. So if you wanted a standard worksheet, click on worksheet. If you wanted the work, a worksheet that actually breaks down the task for you, click on the differentiated work, um, worksheet. And obviously, you know, in every single session other than the while last week, we always have a checkout. So do click on the checkout. Okay, so that's um, brings us to the end of this housekeeping. Let's come back to our PowerPoint. So I'll share this part with you. 
Okay, if you've got any questions that like we said before, all you've got to do is make sure you email your question to Mr. Mules, who will then reply back to your questions. Any questions that you have, it can be questions about um, your start date, it can be a question about unit. Whatever the question is, please do feel free to um, let her know, okay? Right, last bit of housekeeping for me, and I'll talk you through this again. Today's session, we're going to be going through the emails that your parents have gotten so far, whether it be about information as to what forms you need to complete, information about when summer school is going to be, information about the transition taste today. I'm going to go going through all of that with you after your geography club. So please, please, please do not um, leave today's session at any point. And if you do, make sure you come back at some point to watch the recording so you know exactly what those dates are. Obviously, every single um, information that I'm going to talk to you about has been emailed to your um, parents as well. So if you had to leave in a rush, please don't feel like you have to stay because that e um, information has been emailed already okay now yes yeah, six without any further ado i'm going to pass you over to sir who's now going to take you through your geography club and as always i'm going to be in the background and i'll be reading your comments as well so i'm not going anywhere i'm still here all right over to you sir all right thanks miss um so welcome year six uh this is uh your geography sort of taste and geography club uh for what is to come in year seven um, so I'm just going to go on to the next slide, please, Miss. Okay, so just as a way of introduction, um, as Miss already mentioned, my name is Mr. Jussick. Uh, I'm the current lead here for Geography at BA. Um, so hopefully you can see all those wonderful faces of yours uh, next year in our classes. So, um, Hopefully some of you have studied geography already. Um, I know some primary schools do a bit of a mixture of history and geography, uh, sometimes uh, doing one term of this, one term of that. So uh, I know some, not all of you have the same sort of um, sort of background into the subject. So we're going to take a little bit of a taster into what we would potentially study in year seven. So um, next slide, please, Miss. Right. Um, so just in case uh, you have done some of these sessions already, um, and in case you don't know, uh, I'll sort of explain what we mean by this. Um, every We don't have lesson titles here at BA. What we do have is a lesson exploration question. So uh, at the start of each lesson, you'll be given a question, and hopefully by the end of that lesson, you will be able to answer that question. So. For today's session, um, we're going to kind of focus a little bit about connections and about Disney. So my question to you, and hopefully all of you will be able to answer this by the end of the session, will be, what can we say about how global Disney actually is? All right, so that is going to be today's session. Now, some of you might be sat there at home thinking, oh, uh, I'm not entirely sure what geography is. I'm not entirely sure uh what the subject entails and what it what it actually does well uh if we move on to the next slide please miss we'll sort of briefly explain right so geography i think uh geography is this really amazing subject of course i'm gonna say that because i'm a geography teacher uh but i think what's so great about it is the fact that it can link to nearly everything that is around us so if you think of everything that you've done today how maybe you've gone to your school, what you are wearing today, um, what you've eaten this morning for breakfast, for lunch, uh, maybe what you're about to eat for dinner, uh, what you've played with. Maybe some of you have gone on an Xbox and played some games. Uh, maybe some of you have gone on the phone and watched some videos on YouTube. So all these things actually link to geography. And all of them, and all of geography is basically always around us. Now, sometimes, if you think of geography, you might think, oh, uh, earthquakes and volcanoes and the sea and maybe going on holiday and aeroplanes. And you're all right if you were to think that, because that's exactly what geography is. It's basically our whole world and what we what we do with it, uh, how we connect with other people around it 
and basically what we get from it. So basically, we're going to start this uh, brief session because, again, as I mentioned earlier, I'm not sure how everyone has done geography before. And in case if you are in the chat window, if you could just say whether you have studied geography at primary school, just whilst I'm explaining this next bit, just so I sort of know roughly whether you have or haven't, so, so we can go through. So if you have studied geography before, just write in the chat window that you have, uh, and we will briefly explain our connection. So, oh, I can see a flood of answers coming through already, like uh, from Belmont Academy, Isla, you said yes. I can see some others coming through already as well, so that's really good news. Good stuff that we are, some thumbs up, yep, good stuff. Um, oh, you're learning about Italy. Great stuff. Well, funny enough, we actually do cover Italy as well at the BA. Um, so, just our very first question. Um, how are we all connected to places or things from around the world? Just a very quick starter question there for you. What I'd like you to do is just in the chat window, maybe with the people around you, so if mum, dad, any parent or carer is there, brother, sister, if anyone's there with you, maybe have a quick discussion. We're gonna do pause just for a minute or so. How are we all connected to places or things from around the world? Now, I gave you some clues a little bit earlier, about two minutes ago, uh, but have that quick discussion with the people around you. Uh, how are we all connected to places or things from around the world? We're just gonna pause for a minute or so. And once you've got an answer with the people around you, type your answer down into the chat and then we will uh, go through some of these answers. Okay, so just a minute or so, just under a minute um, and then we'll move on, all right? Okay, 30 seconds left. Just getting typing your answers into that chat window. You can see some answers coming in, some really great answers, some really advanced answers, in fact. Okay, 15 seconds left. Just finishing up your answer. Okay, and as some of you are just finishing off writing, that I'll just go through some of these of what I can see. Um, so yes, we are all connected to animals and humans. Uh, Michael, you mentioned that, and tectonic plates. A lot of physical geography there, uh, a bit more on that a bit later. Um, Harry, you mentioned how connected we are because of all the humans and countries that there are. Again, very accurate. That's more on the human geography side, so the flip of physical. Uh, most grow plants and plants from other countries. So, Jazz, you mentioned about ecosystems there. So, again, a little bit of physical geography. Um, Isla, you mentioned about the internet and how connected we are to people and places from around the world. Another great answer. Uh, oh, and you further, there's another further answers medicine and pills. Aeroplane, I think aeroplanes is probably the, the best one, really, uh, especially when we go away on holiday and we go somewhere else in the world, uh, whether it be in, in Europe or a bit further away. I think that one is the interconnectedness that everyone can think of. Yeah, great stuff with aeroplane. And we share the air that we breathe and sources of food and we eat and the spaces that we live. Chris, great answer there from Pelham Primary School. Amazing stuff. So yeah, um, you guys are all right. And if Miss just clicks the next slide for me, I'll sort of, pretty much all of you have mentioned one of these answers. So basically we are all connected to one another in some sort of way. Um, if you think about where we get our food from, that our, a lot of our food can travel from 
various parts of the world. I mean, a lot of our tomatoes actually come from Spain. Uh, a lot of our mushrooms come from Poland. Um, many of our broccoli and green beans, they come from Africa, mostly Kenya, uh, but sometimes Ethiopia as well. Uh, we communicate all the time. If you think of all the sort of social media apps that we have at the moment, like Instagram and TikTok and YouTube, and in fact, in Google even, like as a search window, we're interconnected with loads of places from around the world, with the US, with Australia, uh, South America, with Brazil sometimes, uh, various parts to India as well. So we're always connected there. Um, we actually move a lot as well. So if you think historically, we actually had quite a lot of trade, um, especially with the British Empire. We had loads of trade coming in and out of London, Liverpool, Bristol, um, and we were importing lots of products like teas um, uh, and things like, clo like clo uh, clothes uh, and cotton. Um, what else have we got? Oh, and games and technology. Yeah. So even if, for example, in, now in today's world, we might play a game online, um, the other players involved in that game might be from halfway across the world. We don't know. So we've got various answers um, from all of you, and all of them are correct. What I'd like you to do now is think about how that world that we currently live in might be slightly different to the world that was around 500 years ago. Now, I'm not saying specifically how our continents might have changed. That's not what we're saying. We're just saying, how do you think life would have been different? So I'm specifically going to ask you to think about maybe the Tudor times, because that was about 500 years ago, 1523. We're in King Henry VIII's reign by that point. So what I'd like you to do is, if Miss goes on to the next slide for me. Amazing, thank you, Miss. Um, what you can see there is a map with two dots, one green, one orange. Uh, obviously, we are the green one in the UK, and that orange one is Australia. Now, what I want you to think about is that connectedness of us today and maybe us 500 years ago. So what I'd like you to do is think about two things. Imagine sending a message, so either a letter or a postcard, or even a text message. How long do you think it would take us to get there, or that message would take us to send, and for the other person to receive it if the other person was in Australia? So imagine you are messaging someone in Australia how long do you think that text message, that letter or postcard might take to get there if it was today? And think about how long it would take to get there 500 years ago. All right, so that's the first thing. And the second thing is how long do you think it would take to get there? All right, so again, how long does it take, does it take to get from the UK to Australia now? And how long do you think it would have taken to get there from in the Tudor times, from the UK all the way to Australia? So again, you can use the people around you to help you out, okay? These are quite tricky questions, okay? But all we're doing is predicting, okay? We're not looking for the right or wrong answer here, we're just predicting, have, having a guess essentially, all right? So having a guess, what do you think, sending a message now and 500 years ago, how long do you think that would take? Okay, and uh, let's do let's do another minute or so. You can write this down in your worksheet. I'm going to ask for you to uh, type in your responses momentarily. So I'm going to give you a good minute or so to do that. I know some of you have already started to write the answers down, but I'm going to give you a minute to think about it, and then we'll go through these answers. All right. So one minute. See what you.
Okay, 30 seconds left, just finishing up. And if you really don't know, if you really have no clue at all, have a little guess. Well, what's the what's the worst that can happen? We can all correct you, okay? So that's all we're expecting. We're just doing a pre slight prediction, okay? 30 seconds left, in fact, 20 seconds left now. Okay, and finishing off. I can see a lot of you already have started to write your responses down, which is really great. Uh, I'm just going to re read through them very quickly. Um, so if we were to sort of think about sending a message, so I imagine I was uh, messaging, let's say, Miss. In, she was in Australia, I was here, um, and we were sending these messages. How long would my message take to get there? Um, a lot of you actually got this one right. It was actually uh, between four and five months. That's how long it would take to get there, four and five months in Tudor times. Obviously now, if we're sending a text message, pretty much instantly, uh, maybe a minute or so, uh, for it to go through our atmosphere and then through our GPS back down. Um, if we're sending a letter, it probably will be about a day or so. Some of you mentioned two days, three days maybe. Yeah, exactly right. Letters take quite quickly now. Um, and how long would it take to get there if I was to travel? Um, and again, this is exactly the same for Tudor times. It's about five months. Yeah, five months of travel. Um, and how long will it take to get there now? Well, there's a direct flight from London to Perth. Uh, it takes about 18 hours. It's quite a long time to be on a plane, if I'm honest, 18 hours. Um, but it, there is a direct flight, so it would take just slightly less than a day. Okay, so again, what that shows us, and hopefully what you've been able to recognise from that, is that we are actually becoming almost a smaller world because it took us so long to get to other places around the world historically, but now it's actually quite quick. Like if you think a text message can get to Australia within a minute and I can get there personally as well within 18 hours, that's really, really quick compared to five months last time. So, what we've, what we've basically shown here is that we as a world are getting a lot smaller and smaller and smaller because it's easier to get to the other side of the world, right? And it being that connected. So uh, next slide, please, miss. Thank you. Um, so... Back onto our main question. So how global is Disney, essentially? That's what we're trying to answer in today's little session, right? Um, so you've done the global bit, so you can find these connections. You can see how we are, how well connected we are to various things from around the world, how connectivity works as well, and how much it's improved in 500 years. So uh, moving on to the Disney element, um, if we start to think, right, what is the link between these two images? Now, I'm going to tell you that there is the Jungle Book there on the left-hand side and Frozen there on the right. Again, you can use the people around you. So whoever's there with you in your room, uh, have a, maybe a quick discussion, maybe type out some thoughts, what you've got. Again, we're not looking for right or wrong answers, just what you think personally, right? What do you think the connection is between these two images? images so what do you think the connection is okay and then once you think you know write your answer down and we'll go through them so very quickly 30 seconds really quick what do you think these connections are if you don't know also write i don't know
Okay, typing in your what you think these thoughts might be. Uh, we've got some answers in. Oh, some answers I didn't even think of the answers for these. Uh, some great stuff here. Okay, last 10 seconds, just finishing up, typing your answers into the chat window for us. Okay, so I'm going to read some of these out because some of these are really good. Uh, so we've got, they're both created by Disney and they're both set on this planet. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, they're showing the connections between humans and animals and they are both cartoons. Yeah, you're exactly right. Uh, they're all living things. Uh, we've got, they all live together as a family. Uh, we all live in different countries. Uh, the main characters all lost their parents. Didn't, didn't even think of that one. That's a really obscure one. Regret stuff there, Harry. Um, and we've got Disney again. So, yeah. Um, Miss, if you just hit the next slide, it should be quick animation. Yeah. So, what basically the connection is between these images is that essentially Disney has actually set all of these movies from all around the world. So if we think about The Jungle Book, it's set in Asia. Uh, Frozen is set in Europe. There's many other Disney films, which I'm actually going to explore in a second, that are set from all different corners of the world. And it, all they're trying to show us is the, maybe the culture of those films and those places. So us growing up here in the UK, and many, actually some of you might not even grown up in the UK, maybe you grew up somewhere else in the world, and um, what these movies actually do really nicely is that they show us the culture, and they show us how these characters are interacting with one another, what it's like in these countries as well. So it shows us a lot about our world and how different we all are from one another. It likes to draw in markets as well, so from places around the world. So uh, if, for example, let's say uh, Frozen is maybe geared to a certain type of audience, then maybe that's what they're also trying to do. Um, various other Disney movies do do that as well. I'm not going to give away which ones because that might be a question a bit later on. Um, and yeah, they show us the stories as well because every person is different and every story that Disney has shown has a slightly different message within it. So again, showing us something slightly different. Um, Miss, just next slide very briefly. Now, there are many, many Disney films. I'm sure you can, I'm sure at home yourself sat there, you can sort of name me as like maybe 20 or so different Disney films. There are many, many ones that you could have mentioned. Um, just a few, obviously, on the board, we're only going to, on the screen, sorry, we're only going to mention these very briefly. Uh, Sleeping Beauty, some of these are very older, older Disney movies as well, like Sleeping Beauty, uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, some more modern ones. Uh, like Princess and the Frog, uh, Finding Nemo, Frozen's quite modern, uh, and some of them, and all of these, hopefully, if the people around you as well, maybe your parents or carers, maybe they grew up with some of these films, you grew up with slightly different films, so again, like, it's appealing to different audiences and showing these stories as well. So, uh, what we will do is, if Miss goes on to the next slide for me, What I'd like you to do, and this is the bit of the Disney being connected that I would like you to focus on. So what I would like you to do is if you think about uh, those films that you can see there on the left hand side. So we're going to focus on The Jungle Book, Finding Nemo, Pinocchio, Emperor's New Groove, Frozen, The Lion King and Mulan. Now, what I'd like you to do is essentially, you've got a world map here. Now, I know it specifically doesn't have any countries on there because you can use Google to help you out, all right? But what I'd like you to do is, with the people around you and Google maybe to help you, actually, some of you might even know where these, play, where these uh, films are set. But what I want you to do is draw an arrow and hopefully on your digital handout, you will be able to expand your arrow so you can actually point 
to where you think the country represents that particular film. Okay, so we did one of these already. Uh, well, we talked about um, Frozen and The Jungle Book. I'll give you a clue. Jungle Book is set in Asia. It's a country we have mentioned already. And Frozen is set in Europe. Okay, so all I want you to do is you've got those films. You've got the sort of picture of those films on your map. And you can expand the arrow to point where you think these films are set. Okay, now there's a few different films. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven films. Um, I would like to give you maybe, because I don't want to run out of time, uh, let's say just five minutes or so with the people around you to help, right? You can use Google as well. So like where you think this might be set, you can type that in. Um, and then draw that arrow to where you think these films are, okay? So um, if you get stuck, uh, do just write your comment. I'll try and help you in the chat window and we will go from there. All right, so five minutes to try and locate these films. Five minutes to locate these films. I can see some answers coming through already. Uh, sorry, I was just getting my charger. Uh, Frozen set in Iceland, Daniel thinks. Okay, yeah. Scandin I can give you a clue, it is in Scandinavia. So point your arrow to Scandinavia and then we will see, and I'll reveal the answers shortly. So hopefully you will get it right. If, uh, if you think it's, uh, if you're not sure, have a quick guess again. There's nothing wrong with guessing, having a quick guess. All we're going to do is just correct you to make it right so you don't think it's wrong. Um, and we've got, I can tell you, we've got two minutes left. Don't worry about finishing all of them, okay? Uh, do the ones you are comfortable with first, and then we'll go, we'll sort of see. Some of you are flooding in the chat though with getting these answers in. Okay, 30 seconds left. Okay, so just going through some of these answers then. Um, so we think that Frozen, we've got Iceland and Scandinavia, as already mentioned by Daniel. Uh, we've got Britain as well, okay? 
Frozen might have been based on multiple locations in Norway. Okay, great. Uh, Sweden, again, so Scandinavia, really, quite a lot. Uh, we've got, uh, oh, I've got numbered answers. I uh, have to see which one was which. Uh, Frozen was number Five. So we've got Norway as well coming through. Yep, it's completely fine if you got some of your answers from Google. That's completely fine. Um, Jungle Book, we've got Asia, some some people for India, uh, Bangladesh as well. Um, Pinocchio, we've got Italy coming through quite strongly on the chat there. Yes, uh, Emperor's New Groove. Peru, yep. And in fact, if Miss actually clicks on the next slide, I'll sort of reveal some of these answers. Uh, and hopefully some of you would have got these right as well. So we've got Frozen there in Scandinavia. Um, I don't actually think there is a specific location um, it is actually set in. So if you put Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Iceland, we'll just say that is correct because that is all Scandinavia. Um, we'll just work our way clockwise on this sheet. So Milan, some of you put China or Northern China. Exactly right, it is. It's based in China. Finding Nemo, this is quite a controversial one. Uh, people are saying Australia, the Great Barrier Reef around there. Some people put Pacific Ocean. And in fact, even when I just Googled it, it was saying, telling me somewhere completely different, like California. So actually... A lot, I would say, I would argue for Australia, if you put that. So if you put the arrow to the Great Barrier Reef and Australia and that eastern coast, I'll give you the mark for that. Um, the Jungle Book is actually set in India. So again, some of you have got these uh, right as well. Uh, the Lion King, uh, again, two countries coming up quite a lot. Uh, we've got Kenya, Namibia. Oh, we've got Tanzania as well. Um, again, there's no set location for those. Um, I believe it is Kenya, but again, uh, all those countries are completely fine to say. Um, unanimously, everybody put Peru for this one, for Emperor's New Groove. You're all correct saying that one. And then last one, we've got Pinocchio, which is, of course, set in Italy. Again, great stuff there. So, um, if Miss just hits next, there should be a short animation come up. Yeah. So basically, um, I want you to start to think about, like, what can we say about how global Disney is from actually all these different locations of where it might be? Are the lives of these characters any different to ours? Like, do is my life or your life very different to the one that uh, Mulan lives or Pinocchio lives. Um, what can the life of some of these characters, like maybe Emperor's New Groove or The Jungle Book, what might they show you or tell you about what the culture of that particular country might be? Yeah. And does weather actually tell you anything about that particular place? Think about Frozen kind of gives you the clue really because it is freezing cold there is what does that really tell you about that place and Lion King the complete and utter opposite so we've got a really cold place and a really really hot place yeah so what do we think of these places okay um essentially those are the kinds of questions and if miss hits next Um, obviously, I've only selected a very few uh, examples of Disney movies. We've only got seven there, but there was many we could have chosen from. And just to give you an idea about how global Disney actually is, if you really think about it, look, you've got Little Mermaid set in Caribbean. We've got loads of deep, dif uh, different locations, Hunchback of Notre Dame set in France, Tangled in Germany, Cinderella, Cinderella in France again, uh, Finding Dory in California. Uh, Wally in space, so not even on our planet, just in somewhere in space. Yeah. Uh, we've got uh, Winnie the Pooh, which is set in England. We've got Milan in China, Aladdin in Saudi Arabia, uh, 
Peter Pan in London. We've got Lady and the Tramp, which is in the northeast of the US. Uh, we've got Up, which is set in Venezuela. Robin Hood in Nottingham. So we've got such a large variety of all these Disney movies coming from all different parts of the world. Um, hopefully that might give you a clue as to how I'm going to ask you to answer the next question. So if Miss hits next, and hopefully this will take us to the last thing, what I'd like you to do is with the people around you and what you've learned already about uh, the connectivity of us as a world and as people uh, in between like different countries and how long maybe it takes us to communicate with one another or how short now because technically it is now quite uh, short to communicate with the other side of the world and if you think about Disney and like where all these different movies are set what can it actually tell us about how global Disney is as a company or as all these films? What can it actually tell us about how global it is? So with the people around you, all I want you to do is start typing your answers away into the chat window and we'll see what some of you think. Do you think it is really global? Do you think actually they could be even more global? Okay. And do you actually agree with Disney creating all these movies from all different parts of the world. So very quickly, uh, I'm gonna give you a minute or so just to type your answers in and then we'll go through some of them and then we will pass back to Miss. So uh, one more minute just to get your answers written down. Okay, 30 seconds, just finishing up. Uh, what can we say about how global Disney actually is? Uh, I can see some amazing, art, some actually really good answers coming through actually. Okay, and just before I pass back to Miss, I'm just gonna go through some of these answers because they're just so good, I need to read them out. Um, the characters all live from different parts of the world and there's a lot of climate change challenges for the characters to face on their journeys. That's the amazing answer. Uh, Daniel, you agree, you say that Disney is very, very global. Um, we've got definitely global as people from all over the world to inspire some people to do different things in life amazing stuff there as well um it's probably more global than we think because millions of people around the world see disney movies and shows jazz amazing answer there uh chris from pelham you're saying disney is very global as all disney films are kind of set from all different corners of the world yes and Michael as well, just very last one, I'll say, uh, we can say that Disney is very global because all of these films are set from all around the world in different countries across the globe, showing different stories, amazing stuff. Um, so really that comes to the end of my little bit. I'm gonna pass over to this very quickly, uh, very briefly. Uh, what I'll say is great to see some of you interact with geography and hopefully it gives you a little bit of a taste about what next year will be like for you we do study some of this already so you'll be experts when it comes to uh being in the classroom and you'll be able to answer all of your teachers questions maybe i'll even be teaching some of you next year so um I'm going to pass over to Miss. Great stuff today. Thank you very much for joining us in Geography. Miss, back to you. Thank you so much, sir. Right, yes, yeah, since we all know what we do at this point. So in the group, we're going to literally show sir how much we really appreciate him delivering an amazing session on geography. And so can I just say, 
that's like the most interesting aspect of geography that I've ever, ever come across. And I'm just sitting there thinking, not only do I know a lot about the different locations of different countries from just watching, going through your session with you, I can actually think about a Disney film, something that's so relevant, so relatable to every single person, no matter what generation you come from. It was so relatable, sir. So even if the parents were watching, they would have learned a lot from it as well. So thank you so much for that. So yes, yeah, success, what you're going to do for me, you're going to put your hands together and you're going to literally flood the chat with lots of thank you, lots of claps for sir, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So it normally takes about, oh, it's coming through already. It normally takes about 10 seconds, but here we go. Thank you so much, guys. Excellent. So um, if you've got any questions about geography here at BA, now will be the time for you to sort of write in your, your question so that I can answer it. So we'll give you two minutes to do that. Two minutes, my camera's on a bit. Two, two minutes to type in any question that you might have before Sir goes off. And enjoy the rest of your sunny day, may I add, because it's almost six o'clock. It's normally a very long day, yes, yeah, six, I can imagine, for you guys as well, actually, because you've been in school all day, you came home, had something quick to eat, log, logged on, and then started another hour of this. So I must say, I think you need to clap for yourselves as well, by the way, because you always go through this, like, Trojan, like, proper troopers so i think you need to clap for yourself as well so well done right any questions about geography you've got 30 seconds oh okay so there's one question there from kay um kaylia um kaylia would have been so helpful if your school's actually attached like i'm gonna say kaylia from du, 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 du. and isla's asking so isla's question is are there any trips abroad? That's Isla from Belmont. And Kayla's question was, how long is geography in year seven? Um, so I'll answer, I'll answer Kayla's question first. Um, so we have one lesson a week of geography. Um, that will be the same as history, which I think, it, am I right, is next week? That's correct. Ooh. Yep. That's so correct. Um, you'll have one lesson a week of history and geography. They're both separate next year. Um, and they are one hour, 20 minute lessons. Um, so that's, uh, and you, you study it all year in year seven, all year in year eight, all year in year nine. And then uh, depending what you want to do for your GCSEs, but that is way in the future for that one. Um, are there any trips abroad? Yes, uh, we do. We're currently planning a trip to Iceland for next year. So all those uh, year nines are currently getting excited for next year. So uh, maybe they want to go see where Frozen was set. Who knows? Mm -hmm. um, but yes, we are planning uh, an Iceland trip, um, potentially even um, Italy, although it just depends um, where we can fit it in in the year. We do do trips as geography in general, uh, not necessarily abroad. We do go to the coast. We do go to Stratford, uh, to the shopping centre in Westfield uh, to look at the Olympic Park. We also take you to the River Thames. And we're sort of thinking about other trips we can do with science, um, maybe even to Kew Gardens to look at ecosystems and uh, sort of biomes and how different plants are like. Um, just trying to see if there's any other questions. Oh, yep, those are the questions. <laughs> That's it. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sir, please feel free to, to leave now. Um, have a pleasant evening, and I'll see your work tomorrow. Um, can you all just say bye to sir? So some bye's flooding into the chat. I need to learn how to type into the chat, believe it or not. Oh, wow. Okay, so that only takes about, say, 10 seconds. Oh, it's coming for a red. Oh, there's another question. Does geography have its own room? Yeah, you'd have your own geography classroom. So um, the geography, its um, department is actually based in the main building on the third floor, and the lessons will all take place in those rooms. The time to end geography lessons or classrooms will be the same classroom as a PD lesson, um, but it's very far in between. All right, thank you so much, sir. Please don't feel like you need to stay. All right. Thank you, Miss. Bye, Thank everyone. Thank you so much. Okay. Yes, yeah, it's just the two of us. 
So me and you. And if you're at home watching with your family, it's still the two of us because it's myself and you. Obviously, you've got background. Okay, so um, some really, really good information to take note of. And do let your parents know as well. Like I said, um, this is only information uh, information based. Your parents have been told by email. So the very first one is the fact that this week our um, support staff have been very, very busy making phone calls to your parents just to let them know that from next week. So next week, Monday and Tuesday, and then the week after and the week after, they're going to be booking your you and your parent in to meet with one of our senior leadership member okay so what that looks like is it's going to be a video um platform so it's a, it's a google meet so you and your parents or your carers who join via that google meet and then in that session you get to just hear more about what's to come a bit more about what september is going to look like but the most important thing it just gives you and your parent that opportunity to, to talk to one of our senior members of staff and then maybe if you've got any questions to ask them all your questions okay so if you've got any question that you feel like oh you don't want to write it down on a chat so much because you feel like oh you're gonna think oh your question was a bit you know too much write it all down so when you turn up for your meet your slt meeting um you can actually just go for your questions with the slt okay so the very first thing is this week a phone call would have come from one of us um if you don't get it this week that means that we've tried to call you a few times we've probably left a message but we're going to call you until we book you in for your slt um parental meeting okay now just to go through the dates for those meetings um there's going to be one next week monday so the monday ones are a lot of people have been booking in already and i know that from when i checked this afternoon we've still got some slots left so Monday and all the meetings will start between 3.45 and the last one will be at 6.45. So that's going to be next week, Monday, um, next week, Monday, the 19th, as well as the 20th. Also, the following week, we're still going to run another opportunity. So, for example, let's say you and your parents cannot make it next week, Monday or next week, Tuesday, the following week. There's also going to be an opportunity for you guys to book. So when that phone call comes through, don't feel pressure that you have to book for that Monday if you're busy, because we want both of you to be there. So we want the young person as well as the parent or the carer. OK, so we've got the following um, week. I'm thinking quick mass hair. So um, it's not coming to me. So the following week, um, we're now going to have the Tuesday. Um, after school, once again, between 3.45 to 6.45, you have the opportunity to actually have your meeting as well. If you've got any questions, please, like we said, don't forget, just email um, Mr. Um, uh, Mr. News. I'll go back to the PowerPoint, actually, so you can see his email. Perfect. So you can always ask Mr. News of the dates that are coming up. Right. So next week, Wednesday is going to be your horrible history club. There I say, um, remember, that's also virtual. So you click on the link on our website. Once the link is um, published, you click on the link and all the activity work you to be there in time for you to use as well. Don't forget your checkout for today. When you do do it, hit submit. So Mr. Muse can then reward you um, next week. So so far we've talked about the phone calls that are taking place um this week and then we said how from monday next week you're going to have the opportunity to have your slt video calls now the one that you're all going to be super super excited about is going to be your transition days so those are days that you get to come in to BA, you get to come in and taste and find out what it will feel like to actually be a BA student. How amazing is that? Okay, now those dates are going to be um, the 4th and the 5th of July. Okay, so Tuesday the 4th and Wednesday the 5th is going to be your transition day. The day will start from nine o'clock 
and it will finish at three o'clock. What would I advise every single one of you to do is to try and get here from 8.45. OK, so by 8.45 there, I say. And the last key date is going to be summer school. If you're skipping, that's amazing. Summer school is going to take place that last week of August. So the Friday well, it's, it's kind of August, actually, because it's the first. So it's Friday, the first of um, September. OK, so that'll be the first day of your summer school. And it'll go on until Tuesday, the 5th. Of September and the next day will be your induction day and then the following day after that you will start your very first day of year seven okay if you've got any questions I can see some have come through about what do you wear for transition days well on the transition day what we advise is that you come in wearing your um, primary school PE kit okay so that way when you do have PE on the day you actually have clothing that it's very flexible that you can work um, work out in. If you've got any more questions, please put them in the chat. We have got four more minutes to go. So please get the questions flooding. Okay, so um, Michael, I'm not sure what your question is. You said you haven't had yours or oh, your welcome call. Your welcome call will be coming. Um, the phone calls have started already, but we've got to call over 300 of you. So don't worry, your phone call will come through, okay? If you if you've got your residential taking place that week, um, I'm so sorry you you, you will not. There's no way you can be in two places. Um, so what I would suggest is obviously you're going to go to your residential, isn't it? Because it's something that you've looked forward to all year. Okay, but not to worry. There's a summer school as well, so you get three days of being here um, during summer school before the rest of the school um, starts coming in. Okay, so don't worry about that, Kalia. Any other questions? We've got plenty of time. Keep them coming. Yeah, so for those of you going to PGL, aka residentials, don't worry about it. Um, I guess the others might tell you what um, those days to days were like. But like I said, summer school come through. So yes, so the summer school days are going to be from nine o'clock to three o'clock. Obviously, a school day starts from 8.45 till 3.10. So it's slightly not as long. Yes, yeah, so what would happen is uh, next week, there'll be an email that will be sent to your parent. And that email is going to have the link for you to register for summer school. So most of your parents have already told us that you're going to be attending the taster day through a form that was sent out. And once again, if your parent has not gotten that form, email Mr. Muse and Mr. Muse will have that sent out to you. But when our um, support staff do call in to book your appointment for your virtual um, meeting with our senior members of staff, they'll ask your parents as well if they've you know received the um, transition taste today form and if they haven't they'll send that to them so we literally we're doing we're doing a lot to make sure that everybody gets that form okay so we'll be asking it quite often so through those phone calls and when you meet with us um, again um, next week during those virtual meetings it's a question that they're going to ask you okay so summer school is the first of september that's a Friday to the 5th of September, which is a Tuesday. OK, let me just get my calendar open. Please, please, please keep your questions coming through. We've got one more minute. There's a lot that we can say in one minute. Okay, calendar.
Okay, so just to go through date, I can see my calendar now, just to go through date. So when your um, parents are called to book the appointments, the appointments will be for Monday the 19th of June, Tuesday the 20th of June, and then the following week, um, choose at the 27th of June as well. Now, for those of you with special requirements, our Senco is going to call and book your appointment separately as well, okay? Um, and then the dates for the transition dates, like we said, it's the uh, 4th, so Tuesday the 4th of July and Wednesday the 5th of July and the school day will be from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. We'll do advise you to turn up at 8.45. And then lastly, Stump Summer School is Friday the 1st of September until Tuesday the 5th of September. Obviously, you won't come to, to transition days, not transition, summer school on the Saturday and the Sunday. So it will run Friday monday and tuesday now uh wednesday the 6th of september is going to be your induction day so you are going to be in school with our year 12 who are also going to be having the induction day so you would have the school to yourself all of friday all of monday and all of tuesday and then on the wednesday you're going to share that's your induction day you're going to share the school with the year 12 and then the following day after that you would then have your very first day at the academy, okay? So on the 7th of September would be your start date. Any other questions? I know we slightly run over. No summer school Saturdays and Sundays, please. You have your weekend to yourself, Chris. So don't turn up on Saturday and Sunday because there'll be nobody else here. Right, yes, yeah, six. Um, thank you so much for your time once again. It's always an honor to sit here and be the background person doing your um club session but most importantly obviously reading through your amazing comments and how enthusiastic you are all the time that always warms my heart so i hope you go off and have a pleasant evening get plenty of rest and enjoy your day tomorrow i could not wait to see most of you here in the academy in person on the 4th and the 5th of July. Thank you so much. And thank you so much, um, parents and carers, if you're still watching at this point, for getting them all logged on and supporting them through this process. Thank you. Bye from myself. And on behalf of Mr. Jusic, I'll see you all next week. Bye for now.